everyone, Shirley here. If you are fortunate enough to have won a federal contract or two, you know that you have to begin spending money right away to prepare for fulfilling those contracts. The government generally expects that you are prepared to execute the winning proposal you submitted. And you probably have been spending money to win those contracts. Although the government is a reliable and prompt payer, it takes time to get the money flowing. Being savvy about financing your company's growth in this particularly challenging marketplace is a key to success. Not all banks or financing companies understand or service federal contractors. That's what we're talking about today. What are the alternative, quick, affordable ways to finance growth in the federal contracting market? To help us with this discussion, I reached out to Teresa Moon, Director of Business Development and Marketing at Parabolus. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you so much, Shirley. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. Tell our audience a little about yourself and Parabolus. Sure. Well, I've been with Parabolus for a little more than a year and a half. I am the Director of Business Development and Marketing, and I head up strategic partnerships and support the growth team for our business. When I'm not doing educational presentations about financing options or hosting our own podcast called Spilling the Tea on GovCon, I engage in events that support the growth of small businesses in this industry. I absolutely love being with my family. I have two little girls that are 9 and 12 years old, and our family enjoys to travel and having outdoor adventures, time in, on, or around any type of water. We live down here in Florida, so we do a lot of outdoor activities. And we enjoy just being active and enjoying time together. Thank you, Teresa. For today's discussion, I'm wearing two hats, one as host and government contracting advisor, and the other as the owner of a small GovCon seeking financing for our role play, which we're going to do in a minute. I will first wear the advisory hat. Let's put this topic in context. Government contractors need letters of support for proposals, mobilization funding, and funding for earned but unbilled invoices. The traditional ways in which small businesses obtain debt financing is loans from family and friends, SBA loans, or a line of credit with a bank. But what happens if the business is ineligible for these types of loans or you need the money quicker? Fortunately, multi-year government contracts enable small businesses to more accurately project future revenues. Therefore, alternative financing options are available to bridge gaps in cash flow. Okay, so now I'm putting my GovCon business owner's hat on, and I reach out to Teresa at Parabolus. Teresa, can you help me finance the startup of a $10 million five-year government contract that I was just awarded? Well, first of all, congratulations. And second, the answer is yes. The only contingency for our service is that you have an active federal contract, either as a subcontractor or a prime. But we want to be partners of yours and your business and not just your preferred lender. So there are some details that I will need to fill in so that I can better recommend where we should begin in terms of your actual financing needs. So let's start with this question. How many years have you been in business? We've been in business for seven years as a government contractor, but this is the largest contract we've ever won. Well, that's exciting, and so we don't want to stifle that growth. So if you don't mind me asking, how have you funded your work thus far? We've been self-funded through a shareholder's loan. Uh, that loan is $80,000. Okay. And what type of services or goods do you provide for this contract? We provide business intelligence or IT type of services. Okay. And about how much of your annual revenue is in federal contracts? 100%. Excellent. And the reason that I ask that is because we specifically service the federal market. So this is great. Do you plan on growing in the government contracting market or are you just looking to finance this one contract? Oh, we definitely plan to grow. We're so excited about this award, but we're not sure of our future financing needs. And that's understandable, and the good news is it's an evergreen opportunity within government contracting. How much revenue did you guys have last year? Eight and a half million. Okay. And is this contract going to require you to hire employees or purchase goods? Yes, we have a quick start. I have to hire 15 people within the next month. 
we have been recruiting and we have contingent offers out, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. But we will also need to supply them with laptops, phones, video conferencing, and uh, telecom equipment. Excellent. Do you have any delivery order requirements? We have deliverables in 45 days that require us to hire staff, train them, and expand our software licensing. We estimate that we will need to spend between $350,000 and $400,000 this quarter to prepare for and execute on this contract. What else do you need from me? We need to start spending money now. Completely understandable. The great news is that our services were developed to assist with pulling cash forward from your assets. Your options with our services are pulled from three different faucets, if you will, of cash. We refer to them as a revolving line of credit that can be used across all contracts at the same time. You can utilize your billed invoices or your accounts receivables to borrow what you need in up to 90% of that invoice. You can use your work in progress or WIP or what is also known as unbilled labor and pull up to 65% of that. And lastly, with your delivery orders, you can use up to six months of your delivery schedule and pull up to 30% for your cash flow needs. Help me understand, I can get a revolving line of credit to pay for my immediate expenses related to this new award without pledging additional company assets? Absolutely. The only necessary collateral are the invoices, both billed and unbilled. We don't require you to offer personal assets or relinquish any business assets. Knowing with certainty that your government contract will be paid is good enough. Additionally, we'll provide you with a letter of financial capability to use to further your growth when you're going after new and bigger contracts ongoing. That sounds great. How do you recommend we proceed, given what I've told you? So in a scenario like this, due to the upfront cost you have to prepare and scale, you can utilize your work in progress to pull cash forward before your invoices are billed. Once billed, you can, again, borrow up to 90% of your invoice to keep the cash flow open in a rinse and repeat fashion. Okay, so what do you need from me? So just a few documents on the onset. We'll require a contract backlog or a list of the current and executed contracts that you're currently working on. We're also going to need to take a look at your 2021 financials, a year-to-date balance sheet, an income statement, and your current AR aging report. Once we receive these documents, we'll review them and set up a follow-up call to share cash flow projections and then set some time up so we can look at where we think the best place to start your borrowing base should be. Okay, I can provide you with these documents. Then what? Then, once we agree on your borrowing base, we'll ask you to sign a term sheet at no cost and we'll begin the underwriting process. This is very consultative. The final stage is approval from our board and you are funded quickly after that. Typically, from start to finish, after we receive the initial documents, we can fund your business in as little as 10 to 12 business days. Well, that's terrific because I am pulling the trigger on these hires. What are the terms and conditions of the line of credit? Sure. Your agreement with us is a term of one year, which can be extended every year at your renewal. You are able to increase your facility as you gain larger contracts that necessitate more cash flow infusion in as little as 24 hours once you're a client of ours. We set up a lockbox account that allows payments to be made through there so your company and Parabolas get paid at the same time. So once you pay off your line, we're removed from that account and all funds go directly to you. So how is this different than factoring? Sure, there are lots of nuances within this that are different. For instance, there isn't any need for you to sell your invoice. You're not forced to borrow more than you need, making your fees greater on money that you actually didn't need to borrow. Also, we consult with you so you only borrow what you need when you need it, and you only pay the interest fee when you're utilizing the line. Well, Teresa, I think this is exactly what my company needs. Okay, so now I'm taking my business owner's hat off for our role play and putting on my advisory hat. And Teresa, take off your parabolous hat and put on your industry expert hat. So what are the advantages of using a private lender as we showed in our role play? Sure. Private lenders have way more flexibility with who they can lend to. They're not restricted by federal regulations. 
so they don't have to be as stringent with the qualifications. Also, there's no need for personal collateral in a private lending environment like ours, so you aren't going to be penalized for any personal credit issues or even low business credit. The collateral are the federal contracts you're working on and utilizing the capital to support. The turnaround time for funding is also a lot faster, which is great for companies who are engaged in contracts that have a fast turnaround like we talked about in the role play. That's excellent. Thank you for that clarification and summary. Teresa, we need to take a break. I'm talking to Teresa Moon, Director of Business Development and Marketing at Parabolus on affordable ways for GovCons to finance growth. When we come back, we'll talk about what to look for in a private lender. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This Growth Masters Federal presentation is hosted by Shirley Collier, President and Founder of Scale to Market. Scale to Market helps businesses think, plan, collaborate, and build market value by developing and executing customized, data-driven business development playbooks, building efficient information systems, and creating high-performing BD teams. Utilizing the proprietary Davy Business Development Growth Framework, Scale to Market partners with business owners and executives to increase their company's value by achieving profitable and sustainable growth in the federal marketplace. Email Shirley at scollier at scaletomarket.com to learn more about the Davy Growth Framework and how it can be instrumental in helping grow your federal contracting business. Back now to Shirley's conversation with Teresa Moon, Director of Business Development and Marketing at Parabolus, as they discuss how to affordably finance the growth of your GovCon. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about the advantages of using a private lender. Now let's talk about market perceptions. There are many misconceptions about debt. If you're like me, you were raised to think that debt is not good. And from a personal perspective, that's probably true. But properly leveraging other people's money is a critical success factor for small businesses. What do small GovCons most often misunderstand about financing growth? I think culturally there is a stigma put on the whole conversation about financing and cash flow right off the bat. So people are insecure about having the conversation. The good news is, is that all businesses of every size in every industry need capital. Even though it's a common issue, it's rarely talked about, though. So limitations are endless because of the conversations that aren't being had. Even the smartest business people are unaware of their options. We need to let our guards down and put our egos to the side and have an open and honest conversation about it. And you're right. A certain amount of debt is a good thing. We call it a strategic use of debt in our industry. Why not borrow someone else's money for a small fee in order to get off and running and spawn growth rather than give up future profit to an equity investment? Teresa, some companies are not sure of the differences between an interest rate and an annual percentage rate, or APR, and therefore they don't know the cost of the capital they are borrowing. Can you clarify? Absolutely. The APR, or annual percentage rate, is the total cost for your loan. While the only similarity to an interest rate is that they're both expressed as a percentage, they do not represent the same value. Interest rates are an impact to the APR, but only represent a portion of the total fees. APRs are always higher because they include the total amount. And what is the difference between factoring, merchant cash advantages, and an asset-based loan from a private lender? Sure. Factoring requires you to sell your assets, your accounts receivables or invoices, to draw that cash out for your borrowing purposes, eliminating it as an asset to your balance sheet. So, for instance, if you have a $100,000 invoice, the factoring company will purchase it from you at a discounted rate, and that's the primary fee of a factoring company. Typically, it's taking off 15% from the total on the onset. So what was once a $100,000 invoice is reduced to $85,000 in your borrowing capability. And then you're forced to take that lump sum whether you needed the entire amount or not. From there, based on the provider, you'll pay fees like activation fees, 
utilization fees, legal fees, unused fees, in addition to the monthly rate for using what is essentially your earned income anyway. And what about a merchant cash advance? MCAs allow you to borrow against future revenue, and it applies excessive interest rates for utilization. I highly discourage using this option under any circumstances, as it is grossly excessive in terms of fees. It requires very little to qualify for it, and you can receive funds very quickly in sometimes less than 24 hours, which is red flag number one. My advice, beware. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah, I agree. And what is an asset-based loan? Asset-based lending is what the bank provides, and some alternative lenders do as well. It allows you to use your invoices or accounts receivables as your collateral to pull money forward to use for working capital. The biggest differences between this and factoring is in that you're not selling your invoice. You can borrow the amount that you want instead of cashing in an entire asset. And there are no excessive fees after the fact to utilize the funds. In federal contracting, timing of available financial resources is critical. Absolutely. I always tell my clients that I love to hear from them when they've won a contract, but I would rather be a part of the planning to win in your RFP process. Too often, if you don't plan ahead with your financial partner, you don't know all that you are capable of funding, and that could include your growth. Also, some contracts require you to carry a line of credit for the work you're providing for them. Even if you don't need it, it can be required. So true financing partners that understand government contracting know how to support efforts like this. Also, access to cash increases take time in some cases with certain providers. For instance, a bank can take up to 30 days or more to increase your line, and that's at best. And if they say no to an increase, then what are you going to do? And many times contractors have to prove their ability in the proposal to fund the upcoming work. How does this usually play out? That's a great question. And this is really where partners like Parabolas can be helpful. Being able to provide a letter of financial capability from your financing partner is key to showing agencies or prime contractors that you have the financial capability to perform. And there are different financing options available at different stages of growth. Can you explain some of these? Sure. So the above reference options that we were speaking of are three major alternative options. In the beginning, if you're under two years in business and with little to zero revenue, you're looking at self-funding or friends and family loans. Two to four years with financial growth, some financial documentation, you have alternative options available to you. And if you've turned a consistent profit for at least 18 to 24 months, you may qualify for some traditional financing at a bank. That is, if you're in an industry that they don't deem too risky. Teresa, if a government contractor is looking for a private lender to provide a line of credit, what characteristics or services should they look for? I always recommend that any of your outsourcing partners should have a deep understanding of government contracting. If your partners don't understand the ebb and flow of the federal marketplace, they're only going to be a fair-weather partner. So you should interview your financing partners as you would your potential employees. Don't just take their word for it. And them telling you that they have clients that are government contractors doesn't translate into an understanding of the industry. Ask them if you can have a reference that you can talk to. And also ask them if they have an alternative lending partner in the case that they are at some point unable to provide you with what you need. Oh, that's excellent. Very good advice. This is the bottom line, folks. There are reliable, cost-effective, reputable financing alternatives for small, growing government contractors that may not be quite bankable or need money quickly to ramp up for a large, recent award. Do your homework, and if possible, plan ahead for contract awards and for business success. Teresa, thank you so much for sharing your insights with our audience today. This has been fun. Thank you so much for inviting me, Shirley. It was good having you. Folks, if you would like to get in touch with Teresa, she can be reached at Teresa at Parabolas.com. That's T-E-R-E-S-A at P-A-R-A-B-I-L-I-S dot com. Or you can reach out to us here at Skelta Market, and we'll make sure you're connected. 
This is Shirley Collier, president of Scale to Market and host of the Growth Masters Federal Podcast, signing off for now. As we close, I want to thank you for joining us today and encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn and visit our website, that's scaletomarket.com, with the number two in the middle, where you will find our library of podcasts, webcasts, white papers, my blog, and other links and resources. While there, please leave us a comment or suggestion so we can stay focused on what's important to you. We'll see you next time.